welcome to Comet's uh, Capital Market Day 2022. We defined Comet's strategy in 2019, and as we, as I have uh, stressed and emphasized on many occasions, uh, we will not make any fundamental changes to the strategy. So as a result of our strategy process back in 2019, we divested eBeam, divested and disentangled eBeam during <laughs> 20 and 21. And as a result, um, today we are one company. We foster two technologies, RF power and X-ray. We go to market with three divisions addressing mainly four market segments, semi, automotive, aerospace, and security. All three divisions focus, however, mainly on growth in the semiconductor industry. Why is that? Well, there is better structural growth. We have better margins, more opportunities than in our traditional markets, and very important, more synergies between the divisions. However, our other three traditional key end markets, automotive, as well as aerospace and security, we continue to serve. Uh, they are um, interesting, but not as interesting in terms of growth and volume as the semiconductor industry. So we execute our strategy with our company-wide and per pervasive boost program um, featuring laser focus on and investment into growth, efficiency, and culture. So with this focus, Comet is very well positioned to work towards the 2025 targets of 830 million in sales, 25% EBTA, and 30% of ROSI. So we are today in strong positions in all our businesses, in two divisions as clear number ones and at IXS among the top three. PCT is a very clear market leader for vacant capacitors and uh, RF matchboxes, but we have constantly gained market share over the past couple of years. We haven't been all too competitive with uh, the RF generators we offered in the past. This will clearly change with Synertia. We're projecting to achieve around 10% of market share in 2025. At IXS, we are in our focus market, semi-electronics, number three, with a sizable market share already, close behind number one and number two. We will catch up further with our new products and our refocused strategy. IXM, where I come from, is small but uh, beautiful and equally clear, maybe even more so market leader for metal ceramic X-ray tubes where we invested heavily in product development in the last three years, also during the downturn. We have had good success in the marketplace with new products, semi-electronics, and battery inspection. So to summarize, we are very well positioned in our markets. We have strong product bases for further profitable growth. So where are our markets geographically? Although we are headquartered in Switzerland, we generate most of our revenues in the key North American and Asian markets, both contributing slightly more than 40% of revenue. Europe remains mainly a market for X-ray, both X-ray divisions, uh, less so for the uh, heavy semi-related PCT business. Positioning ourselves as technology leaders, it is important to be very close to our customers uh, for co-development projects, and therefore we've taken several expansion steps in the last three years, examples being Malaysia, Penang, where we uh, just had the official <laughs> inauguration uh, five, six weeks ago, uh, but also in Taiwan, Japan, and, and South Korea. I'll talk about expansion and future plans on one of the next um, slides. Key message here, we are present where our markets and customers are, and we are convinced both in terms of product offering and market presence that we are very well positioned to grow within our markets. So let's, let's talk about our markets. Um, our main 
our focus market, as already emphasized earlier, is the semiconductor industry, where as critical component supplier, we play a vital role in the entire global semiconductor value chain. This is especially true for PCT, but increasingly also for both X-ray divisions. Until 25, we estimate that uh, we will generate around 75% of the group's revenue within this industry. For PCT alone, the current TAM, including the new RF generator platforms, inertia, amounts to approximately $2.1 billion. Our customers are the wafer fab equipment manufacturers in the front end for PCT and the OSATs in the back end for our X-ray divisions and with advanced packaging, and that is sort of the interesting play going forward, um, with advanced packaging solutions, increasingly also the IDMs and foundries in the middle. We supply with PCT an industry which is highly consolidated, with three players accounting for approximately 80% of the wafer fab equipment market, whereas up the value chain as you move further to the semi-device manufacturers and also the OSATs, the value chain, the field gets wider. Now, common to all the players in the industry along the entire value chain is that there are very high requirements in terms of the technology you have to offer, reliability and quality. Only a few companies are meeting those requirements across the entire value chain. Comment is one of them. So to summarize, Commons products are critical in one of the fastest growing and most demanding industries of our times. Our TAM is approximately $2.1 billion, uh, which is a nice volume and market to be uh, growing in. And uh, it is highly consolidated with high barriers of entry and ultimately critical for a market, an entire market, which is $2.4 trillion. So, as one group, we have the advantage that we are present along the entire value chain with critical RF subsystems in the front end and non-destructive X-ray testing in the back end, both serving increasingly, and that is interesting, uh, partially the same customers. So let me exemplify this with a video, and I hope uh, technology is not going to fail me. There you go. Technologies have significantly improved our daily lives, making us more efficient. We require electronics with ever more power, storage capacity, and speed at an ever decreasing size. Producing the high performing microchips needed for this requires utmost advanced manufacturing processes. So, how is a microchip built? Microchips are produced out of silicon wafers, very thin plates of purified, shaped silicon, an ideal material for making transistors. After various treatments of the wafer, a photoresist coating, highly sensitive to light, is applied on the wafer. A UV light of extreme intensity is directed towards a mask and onto the wafer at an extremely small size. This causes a chemical change in the coating that is exposed to the light. The soluble resist coating is washed away, cleaning the wafer surface to start utmost precise chip building processes. It's when creating the 3D structure of the chip that our expertise in plasma control is crucial. In a vacuum chamber, the wafer is placed on a pedestal. The chamber is first pumped and then flushed with different possible gazes. We then ionize these gases with RF power to ignite various species of plasma. To build the chip structure of the wafer, plasma ions react on the wafer's surface to selectively remove and deposit material. This is done hundreds of times until the 3D structure of the chip is created. To enable that at nanoscale, this process requires a highly precise control of the RF power, which is produced by a high-frequency generator. When connecting the generator directly with a coaxial cable, the RF power is reflected, 
damage, which is why it requires a so-called matchbox to transform the RF impedance of the chamber to the coaxial cable. Since the impedance of the chamber is changing during the process, variable vacuum capacitors are used in the matchbox for automatic tuning. One wafer can now contain thousands of identical chips that need to be separated. In the traditional process, the wafer is precisely diced and chips are taken individually out of the wafer. For protection, a chip is packaged. In the conventional technique, chips are placed on a packaged substrate where they will be connected through soldered metal wires. After a certain number of optical and electrical probes, a molding process encapsulates each wired die in a protective plastic package. The chip is then ready for inspection. While traditional packaging interconnects the different chips on a board horizontally, new manufacturing processes improve downsizing by stacking them on top of each other, allowing for higher performance and smaller footprint. We call that advanced packaging or 3D packaging. This great advance also comes with challenges. Each chip is interconnected by thousands of wires and bumps, and the failure of only one interconnection could put in danger the entire module and ultimately create a defect electronic device. Because the chips are encapsulated, conventional optical inspection is no longer enough. It's where our X-ray technology comes in. To ensure zero default, the highest level of X-ray inspection is possible thanks to our precise X-ray sources, tubes and generators. Active inside our X-ray systems and combined with highly precise imaging software, even the tiniest defect becomes visible. Our X-ray solutions can inspect objects that are many thousand times thinner than a human hair. And now, what if we could predict where the next defect may appear? By combining X-ray with AI, we are soon opening up the possibility to customers to predict and avoid issues during the manufacturing process, ultimately decreasing waste products and improving safety. No matter what the future of technology requires, should it be in electronics, automotive, aerospace, or security, Comet is ready for the challenge, led by experience. Driven by curiosity, Comet. So, what are the success factors to achieve all of this? In the front end, precise control of the process conditions, so the plasma conditions, uh, which is crucial for improved yield and enabling smaller and smaller technology nodes. In the back end, non-destructive methods for quality inspection, such as X-ray, as well as process optimization, relying on low total X-ray dose, highest resolution, and also high speed. And increasingly, as shown in the, and, and stipulated in the video, AI plays an important, very important role for automated defect recognition and process optimization. So to summarize, combining our X-ray businesses with PCT makes perfect sense. So where is our main industry headed? Now looking beyond the expected dip in 2023, the semiconductor market will experience secular, uh, secular growth uh, going forward. Uh, and that is driven by an increasing number of trends from you know, general digitalization to edge computing big data, AI, uh, smart mobility, connectivity to consumer electronics. Semi-demand remains fueled by this data-driven economy and society and is expected to reach at least a trillion dollar by 2030. Now, the anticipated cyclical semi-downturn, uh, which is almost uh, asked for in, in the media, um, happens probably earlier than uh, previously anticipated and is pulled forward into 2023 rather than previously uh, reported 2024. Now the current driver of the down cycle in spend is sort of as, as usual memory where over the past couple of quarters a strong demand and supply imbalance existed and probably still exists. Logic, foundry are still expected to grow. As a matter of fact, shortages are still something that we at Comet battle every day. So 
the projected revenue growth in 2023 for the semiconductor industry, the entire industry, is probably a negative 3 to 4 percent. Excluding memory, we anticipate it would be a positive 1 percent. So to summarize, despite a dip that is forecasted to be less pronounced than downturns in the past, Comet is focused on the right industry, showing robust growth past 2023. Given the increasing number of trends supporting the semi-industry amplitudes and duration of down cycles are projected, or we anticipate that they will become smaller. So why do we believe that the dip is going to be less pronounced this time around? Now, semiconductor growth is significantly less dependent on the consumer sector, that is one thing, and on memory chips compared to the last down cycle in 2018. So the current macro uncertainties weigh mainly on consumer electronics, smartphones, PCs. However, non-consumer segments have reached a level of more than 50% of the market. That's good news. Also good news, the share of market held by memory has been going from two-thirds down to about one-third of the market today. Foundry Logic, on the other hand, has done exactly the opposite uh, and is close to 70% and they continue to invest. So equally important, comments exposure to memory used to be rather large. Um, it was approximately 70% in 2018, while well, it has dropped below 50% today. So a lower contribution from memory to semi-growth, a lower exposure of Comet's portfolio to memory. Um, the impact on our business is expected to be significantly lower than in 2018. So why are we convinced that the leading edge foundry and logic business continues to invest? Well, as you can see here on those technology roadmaps, the leading edge companies each push very aggressive multi-year technology roadmaps, racing ever closer to the, the edge of physics, uh, uh, really the end of Moore's law, and, and probably also economic viability. It's an arms race for technological supremacy, fueled by geopolitical considerations and, and certainly not stopped by market weakness. So new and more complex technologies, smaller technology nodes, all of which heavily rely on uh, increasing use of RF plasma technologies, our products, and there is evidence for that. So while we anticipate a growth for wafer fab equipment spend of almost 9% in 22, we anticipate a drop in 23 of 13 to 14 percent, but at the same time, our share of our product in wafer fab equipment is growing. There is a shift from previously about 1.6 percent of the bomb, the bill of materials, to 2 percent of the bomb. So the bill of materials for RF subsystems per production unit increases because of the technology roadmap, higher complexity, in-chip architectures, and smaller technology nodes. So on average, we expect that revenue generated by critical RF subsystems supplied by Comet will grow at 10% annually between 20 and 25. So weakness in semiconductor device production does not translate one-to-one -one into our business activities as our share of the bill of material is increasing. And with the inertia generator, our overall share of wallet is increasing strongly as well. So let's change gear and move to another market we serve, automotive. In itself, a market with a low single digit growth of four to five percent. So as such, not super interesting. However, there is a pronounced shift from internal combustion engines to electric vehicles. Now, the share of EV production is anticipated to go from approximately 8.5% back in 21 to 25% of total output in 2025. Now, why is this relevant? 
So, electromobility leads to higher microchip content, batteries and power electronics. So in 2020, on average, there was approximately $500 worth of chip content per car. In 2026, it is anticipated that there will be double the content by value. Well, the higher microchip content is obviously an underlying driver for PCT's business, but more importantly, the higher microchip content um, or the, the higher electronics content in, in general, um, which is high reliability electronics, leads to more high-end X-ray inspection. This is equally true for batteries. So EV penetration helps driving growth in all our divisions. PCT profits indirectly, while IXS and IXM are perfectly positioned in the transformation of their sort of legacy key industry automotive. Last but not least, the air traffic related industries of aerospace inspection and security. Now, after the COVID related downturn in 2020, the aerospace industry has returned to solid growth and uh, is already contrib contributing to good growth in our X-ray businesses. So air traffic volumes are forecast to return to 2019 levels by 24. Growth from 24 to 30 is anticipated to be in excess of 5% per year. Now this is highly relevant as air traffic volumes correlate with IXS and IXM sales into aerospace as well as security markets. So similar to automotive, Aerospace will remain a good contributor to our results as the industry is expected to grow in the coming years. So looking at our TAM and SAM, we can state that Comet serves highly attractive markets. Our SAM features nearly double the growth potential going from 21 to 25 than the total available market that we're serving. Noteworthy, the importance of our target market semi-electronics will grow in the next three years. Also, since our last capital, capital market days, um, market analysis shows even bigger markets for 2025. This drives, obviously, further growth and supports our targets for 2025. So Comet has the right focus on growth markets. The strategy is right. Execution, execution is key. So let's take a look at some elements of execution. As mentioned in my intro, Comet's ambition are based on a sound strategic framework, the Boost program. It is based on investments in R&D to create the product portfolio in order to uh, allow to boost growth. It is based on investments in efficiency gains from regional setups to productivity gains in operations in order to boost profitable growth. And it is based on investments in our culture, in our people, our talents, in our business system, in sustainability. Uh, the outcome of these investments and proper execution are customer success and value for all our stakeholders. A high performing and scalable organization also beyond 2025 and paying all that into our ambitions to be the pace setters, technology and market, market leaders in our industry. So our strategy is confirmed and will be leading us towards our targets for 25 and beyond. All of this relying on execution, I will turn to a number of examples as proof points. So over the past three years, we turned the focused strategy into reality and expanded our foot footprint to be closer to our customer base. Well, the focus has been on Asia, the region with the highest growth potential. This is obviously not only China, but also places like South Korea, where we have a design center today, um, Taiwan, Japan, or Malaysia, which has become our uh, manufacturing hub in, in Asia. We have thereby pursued two approaches, increased productivity and efficiency, that would be Penang, improved design, sales, and service capabilities in the region, that would be South Korea, Taiwan, Japan. And besides Asia, we have also further invested in Germany for the new RF generator family, 
and in Switzerland for our increased backup demand, so increased backup capacities. And as we speak, we are expanding our match production site in Malaysia, in Penang, as well as consolidating and expanding our San Jose flagship site in the US, in the heart of the Silicon Valley. Also looking beyond 2025, we are already investigating future locations to um, put capacity in for backups, for match boxes, but also for X-ray systems and modules. Well, the group is therefore diligently expanding the footprint to master future growth. Now, especially noteworthy is, is Penang as the Asian manufacturing hub. Um, the Penang footprint is, is of utmost importance for our 2025 targets and makes us as a group much more resilient as we were before. We have been filling up Penang with high volume production transferred from San Jose and also partially now from, from China. Um, San Jose, very important, remains the most important place for match box R&D and high end manufacturing at PCT. It's nicely situated in the neighborhood of all our important customers, um, enabling us to enter into co-development activities. We are ahead of plan in Penang. Therefore, we announced the further expansion back in September. Penang was a super great choice. Transfer is almost completed, and there is already need for more space and capacity. Now, besides Penang, and now turning to the divisions, the new Synertia Generator platform is clearly the single most important program of the last couple of years for PCT, but also for the group as a whole. We have so far received overwhelming positive feedback from customers, also exemplified by orders. The market introduction is progressing well, and we are well ahead of plan. So important to understand, Synergia is not just a product. It is a product family. It is a product and technology platform. In combination with the Synergia matchbox, you might see that also as the generation three matchbox. Uh, we can offer RF sub systems with unparalleled benefits for our customers. We are currently fully engaged with customer tests while we continue to develop and introduce further variants, uh, different frequency ranges, different power ranges, um, serving the specific needs of our customers in the different applications that we serve. Now, Andre Grady, which uh, sits somewhere behind there uh, and is uh, at least half the brain in the conception of uh, the Synertia technology and product platform, will talk more about the benefits for the customers and the USPs after the break. And just to point out, you have uh, a little booth behind there where you can probably not play around, but he can play and you can watch. Um, so we are convinced that we will capture significant market share with our Synertia platform um, generator as well as matchboxes in the next two to three years. Now, turning to IXS, the repositioning and the focus on semi and electronics is making very good progress. It is back and loaded when looking at our 2025 targets. Well, repositioning takes time. We've always said that. Uh, but so far, we have very successfully decluttered IXS uh, um, you know, offering and, and reduced hardware as well as software platforms to target level. We have enhanced productivity at customers through integration of AI-based visualization software with first launches in 2022. And the focus on high growth semiconductor and electronics markets is really on track, especially in the area of advanced packaging inspection. So we are well on track and are already seeing attractive opportunities beyond 2025. Last but not least, investments in R&D uh, to drive product portfolio expansion at IXM has led to a even better market position in general at the X-ray module division. The focus on semiconductors, electronics and battery inspection 
has led to excellent opportunities and first good business specifically. Now, new products developed and launched during the pandemic already make about 13% up of revenue in 2022. Market share in semi and electronics is growing very fast. We have ramped up our sales and service as well as marketing activities in our focus market Asia, uh, strongly as a matter of fact. And we have achieved a very strong entry into battery inspection markets based on our new product platform, Mesofocus. So the strategic pivot of IXM out of what used to be focus areas like automotive and security into um, semi is happening successfully. ISM is the smallest division, but a reliable contributor to the Comet growth story. So, um, kind of getting to the home stretch. Um, we talked um, about uncertainties uh, already early on before the, the meeting started. Uncertainties have certainly increased over the past 12 months, but uh, we are absolutely convinced that uh, as Comet, we are very, very well positioned to weather the headwinds ahead. We talked about the topics in black letters many times before. What is sort of new is added in red letters. All those topics will be certainly familiar to you. So on the challenges side, clearly recruiting and retention remain a challenge worldwide. It's still difficult to hire people. Uh, retention and talent management are very important. On the trade conflict side, yeah, that is kind of the, the conundrum right now. Um, the new U.S. export restrictions for China, um, they have an impact. It is a challenge to our business. How much is difficult to say. We have a little bit of direct business to China, but then quite a bit of business through our customers in the U.S. to China. Moving to the supply chain, the supply chain remains very volatile. Um, it is still difficult, uh, especially in order to get logic chips. Um, but in other areas, we also see that it is partially easing. So very difficult to say in 2023 how the impact will be on our performance. You've probably seen that our backlog has uh, uh, grown very, very strongly this year. Main reason for that is that we haven't been able to deliver all that we wanted to. Energy shortages, well, uh, that's uh, something that uh, impacts mainly us in Europe. The impact on Comet thus far is rather limited, and we are convinced that uh, we, will get through, we will get through the winter unharmed. Um, armed conflicts, I, I mean, this is sort of the, the nasty one. Um, and what a terrible situation that we have a war basically at our doorsteps. Now, the war itself poses no direct impact on, on Comet, uh, but the effects on the general economy surely do influence us. Moving to the opportunity side, Clearly, I've been talking about new products and the markets uh, with Sinertia, um, uh, artificial intelligence workflows at IXS, new systems, new sister, uh, services at IXS, as well as new technologies at IXM. I think I've made the point. We are very well positioned for growth going forward. Our financial flexibility remains very strong. Lisa will talk about this later. And long term, we have very favorable markets um, shown in my market overview. Certainly, we are riding on one of the strongest and most fascinating trends, digitalization in general, of our generation. Mindset change. Um, we have just started to change our mindset at Comet. Comet, as a Swiss SME, we have been for 70 plus years, very technology-centric. Uh, this is not opportune going forward. So we have changed over the past couple of years in direction of becoming much more customer-centric. That is also one of the reasons why we have been expanding our footprint into our markets where the customers sit. Last but not least, regionalization of the semi-industry, clearly an opportunity for us if uh, more and more fabs are being built in Europe and the US. 
but the regionalization is basically breaking a supply chain um, that was one of the first ones and today one of the strongest in terms of globalization. So regionalizing it, bringing it back home, it's certainly not going to increase efficiencies for the industry. But it, I remain with my statement, it is an opportunity for us. So to end, although uncertainties have increased during 2022, we feel very well positioned to benefit from the structural mid and long-term drivers in the markets we address. We are on track to meet our 2025 targets, despite an expected softening of the business environment in 2023. And with this, I'd like to thank you for your attention, your patience, and would like to hand over to Lisa for financial updates. Lisa. Um, no, it's okay. Yeah, okay. I can't see above the computer, so I want them all to see my face. All right, uh, good morning, everyone. It's a fantastic opportunity to be here. It's really nice to see all of you in, in person. This is my third capital markets day, and the good news for me is that my story is actually quite easy and very simple because it has not changed. So with that, um, let's go into um, the financials, um, supporting our 2025 targets. So first of all, the, the story really has not changed. Uh, the financial pillars of how we think about our target model in 2025 remain robust. And what I hope to do today is to give you a few examples of what we have done since this, this focus strategy was launched in 2019. So first things first, we, what we want to do is we need to focus on our growth. And so that means primarily outperform the markets that we are in, serve our customer needs, make sure that we are customer centric. And we have done a lot of those things over the past few years to make sure that we have increased our proximity to customers through, globe for, through our geographic expansion and also about how we think about production and manage our supply chains. The second thing is that we need to introduce new technology into the semi and electronics markets that serve customer needs and are yield enhancing. And so we'll talk a little bit about that when we look at um, how, we, how we prioritize our research and development investments. The next major focus, number two, is operating leverage. So how do we make sure that we are executing in a profitable way and that we are thinking through investments that are really focused on our strategy. So how do we make sure that we are outperforming in semi and electronics? And how do we make sure that we are delivering technology on time to, to our customers to meet their needs? The third pillar is, I'm gonna call it resiliency. And it's really talking about our balance sheet and the strength of the financial model at Comet. We've had tremendous success over the past few years. We're in a very, very good position now to be able to absorb any uncertainties that we see going into uh, 2023. We can absorb uh, the, the, the cycles a little bit better in the semiconductor markets. Um, and so we feel very good that we can remain committed to our prioritization of investments and our capital return to, to shareholders. So then that brings us to the fourth pillar, which is our capital allocation. Uh, we have questions from you all the time on this particular one, but the answer really has not changed. Our first priority is to invest in organic business growth. Our model for 2025 is based on organic growth. We will, of course, look at merger and acquisition opportunities as they present themselves. What's really important to us is that the opportunity fills a niche on our technological roadmap or gets us access to processes or geographic regions that support our overall focus strategy on semi and electronics. So with that, those are the major four pillars. Why don't we take a look at um, our progress on uh, the first two, which is growth and operating leverage. Um, so it's, it's really important, I think, to um, help provide some proof points about what we've actually done over the past few years. 
So we launched this strategy in 2019. If you look at 2021, uh, we had a historic record year for Comet. It was the first time that we broke 500 million Swiss francs in terms of revenue. Our growth grew on an annual basis of about 30%. If you look at 2022, we're expected to grow the business again to another record year. Um, and we should end the year at probably about a 13% growth, even at the lower end of, of the guided range of 580 million. So we're really proud about what we've been able to accomplish over the last two years. And it's really because we have been very focused on, on the strategy that we have laid out um, for, for all of you. So if we look at what needs to happen to go into 2025, um, the first thing is that in our plasma control technologies business, PCT, we expect to grow on average of 15% um, towards that 2025 goal, starting from a baseline of, of 2022. If you look at it, we're, we're saying it's about 200 million in additional revenue from, from, from today's standpoint. And how do you get there? The first thing is that we, have, we, need to, we need to launch this inertia platform, which you'll have a demonstration of later today. Our expectation has always been and continues to be that it will achieve about a 10% market share based on about a billion dollar uh, market. And so that's how you can think about that. The remainder of growth that we're expecting from the match boxes and the vacuum capacitors needs to outperform market. Uh, over, that, over that period of time. So that's how we think about PCT. On the X-ray systems side, it's very important for us that we are focused on profitable and sustainable growth. So that means that we introduce technologies like the Mesofocus in IXM that achieves, um, it achieves a penetration into the battery market and electronic vehicles markets. We're also expecting that in the X-ray systems business that we have targeted opportunities in, in advanced packaging inspection. Uh, and that's how our, our model is, is built on, on the growth portfolio. Shifting over to operating profit as measured by EBITDA margins. We have seen a lot of success over the past couple of years, and I want to highlight some of those successes because it really is going to be the bridge that allows us to get to the 25% EBITDA margins by 2025. So if we take a look at um, what happened in 2020. So in 2020, we had 400 basis points worth of margin growth. A full basis point I'm sorry, not a full basis point, a full percentage point actually came from our decision to divest the e-beam business because investment in this business was no longer core to our strategy in semi and electronics. That has positioned us well going into um, what could be a more uncertain year into 2023. If you look at 2021, what happened there? We had very, very good customer success in the semi in the semi business with PCT. We also showed proof points in the realignment of the X-ray systems business. And the third major thing is that we started to see the benefits of expanding our production capacity in Asia. We we took a we used to we used to. Um, uh, manufacture our matchboxes in San Jose, California. We started the transition over to Penang, Malaysia, and that achieved a few things for us. It's a, it's a, it, 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 we were able to regionalize supply chains in, in Southeast Asia. We also had access to a labor market that was more best cost than San Jose, California. So if we, if we think about those pillars going forward, uh, we have to obtain about 400 basis points more of margin improvement going from 2022 into 2025. We feel we are much better positioned to, to do that now based on the actions that we've taken over the past few years um, to, to make that to make that 25 percent a reality. So overall, we feel that we're well on track from a sales and an operating performance perspective. So let's talk a little bit about um, how, we, how we think about investments. So first and, foremore, first and foremost, as I've mentioned before, our primary priority is to invest in organic growth. 
We will invest in talent, in technology, in global infrastructure, all things that will enable us to achieve a scalable growth going forward. On the CapEx side, we've, we've said it many times, but I think it is worth repeating over the past few years, we've expanded operations in Penang, Malaysia. We will continue to make sure that we are expanding our capabilities to meet our customer needs. We have also announced plans to consolidate our four sites in San Jose, California into one site. It will be a more geo-friendly facility. It will also be an opportunity for our employees and our customers to be at one site in San Jose, California, focused on research and development and, and new product introduction. Going forward, the way you can still continue to think about CapEx is that we will be closer to the 5% of, of sales range over that period 2022 through 2025. As we continue to think about expanding our vacuum capacitor pr production facilities in Flamont, thinking through alternative sites um, for manufacturing in, in Southeast Asia. Now, on the R&D side, R&D in our PCT business, <coughs> excuse me, um, R&D in our PCT business has been focused on Sinertia and it has been focused on our generation three development um, of our matchbox and our platforms that Andre will explain to you a little bit later. Uh, the second thing is that in IXM, we'll continue to focus on investments such as the Mesofocus that will provide access to us to electronic vehicles, to the battery markets, and in IXS, we're gonna be very, very focused on using our our capabilities with our acquisition ORS to develop software applications for our customers in the advanced packaging inspection arena that should increase yield for our customers. And that's really our selling proposition um, in the X-ray systems business going, going forward. So our investments will be focused on organic growth opportunities. They will be focused on expanding our portfolio in semi and electronics. And that's how we will, we will continue to, to guide the financial model going through the 2025 year. All right, so, so with that, um, on the capital allocation side, um, we've, we've been focused on providing dividends to our shareholders. It's, it's only fair that shareholders participate in the success of, of the business. That is our first, our first and foremost um, priority for cash is to in reinvest in the business. We, do our, we are a growth stock, we're a growth opportunity, and we want to make sure that we're focused in engaging in profitable, sustainable growth activities for, for the company. We will continue to guide our, in, on dividends that we will pay out 25% to 40% of net income on an annual basis. We are in discussions with our board of directors on an annual basis. Um, in terms of share buybacks or other, other types of, of vehicles to return capital to shareholders. But at, at this time, the best way to um, think about our capital allocation is, is in the form of, of a dividend. Ultimately, our major goal is to make sure that we achieve uh, flexibility with our, with our balance sheet and that we have a robust financial position. So as I've mentioned, Comet is a growth story. We continue to be a growth story. What we wanted to do here is just to give you a picture of how we have performed over the past 10 years. Uh, we've achieved sales growth on average over the past 10 years of approximately 9%. We have expanded margins and have ultimately increased uh, earnings per share over the 10 year period, um, achieving a growth of, of 20, 20.7%. So, we're, we're happy with what we have a, been able to, to do. We feel that we've, we're on track for another very good year going into 2022. We're well positioned to absorb some of the uncertainties that we will see going into the 2023 semiconductor cycle. Um, and at this point, we can still confirm that we're on track for 2025. Um, we feel good about hitting our goal of 830 million Swiss francs in sales at a 25% EBITDA margin and our return on capital of, of 30%.
So I hope that gives you a, a bit of a flavor for um, consistency in, in our message. We will continue to be focused on sustainable growth, new product introduction, executing to our customer needs and doing so at best cost. We will continue to make sure that we have all of the levers at our disposal to work on our resiliency. And we will continue to uh, deploy, deploy cash to organic growth and also um, in, a, in the form of a dividend for our shareholders.